Hello friends, it's me, R. Dallas, and in this quick video, I want to introduce you to a very important principle of software development. It's called the Explicit Dependencies Principle, and I know a lot of you probably haven't heard of it. It's not as popular as some of the other principles. Now, imagine I've been given the task of writing a console app to help go through and process orders. It doesn't really matter where the source is, but it's late in the day and I've got the code running to pull out the order and the next thing I need to do is just get it to be processed. Now, we already have code that kind of does this sort of thing, so I'm pretty confident that I should be able to get this working with some existing services without having to write a lot of my own code and really just kind of hook up plumbing that we already have. So let's go ahead and see if I can find something that works for this. I think I can probably just, you know, type new uh, order something and look for something that looks right. And uh, yeah, order processor. That looks that looks good. And look, it's already giving me IntelliSense and it can process an order. That's that's perfect. Um, all right, so I don't want to just call on one line. Let's assign it to something, and then we'll we'll process it. Perfect. All right. You know, I really need this to work quickly because I've got to get home. I've got to stop at the store first and pick up some things for some pasta dinner I'm going to make. So if this works, I can just ship it and be out of here. Let's see, can we build? It builds. All right, check it out. This is so cool. No dependencies required. I love it when I've got a class that I can just use and I don't have to pass it anything. All right, so I need this to work so I can get out of here on time today. I got to stop at the grocery store before traffic's too bad, pick up some things for dinner. Uh, hopefully this works. Let's run it. Uh-oh. What's the deal here? Could not find a file, blah, 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 settings.json, create file, uh... No, this is going to take too long to fix. I'm going to have to just call it a day, check this stuff in. I'll, I'll fix it tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, I got to run. I got to get to the store. Okay, before I go, I just need to double check a recipe. So we're going to make this uh, recipe I found online for spaghetti bolognese. And, you know, it's like any recipe online. You got to read a whole life story about the thing. So, yes, okay, blah, blah, blah. All right, here's what I need. I'm just going to copy the ingredients list and... Send that to myself, and all right, I'm good. I'm out of here. All right, I just got out of the grocery store. I'm running a little bit behind, but I got all the things on the list. I'm ready to get home and make this food. Let me, I'll touch base with you when I get there. All right, so welcome to my kitchen. Let's make this. Okay, let's get down here to the steps. I've got uh, heat olive oil in the pan. Got it. I already chopped up the onions and the garlic, so they're all diced and minced and ready to go. Uh, get them sauteing. Mm, all right, that smells great. All right, now, next step. Uh-oh. Add ground beef. What ground beef? Nobody said anything about ground beef. Like, d d there's, there's no ground beef here. Why, why am I supposed to get ground beef? The stuff's already cooking. Uh, it's not my fault. All right, obviously, this whole dinner fiasco could have been avoided if... The recipe had simply included all of its ingredients in the ingredient list like any recipe should. Any cook would be perfectly within their rights to get annoyed if they were halfway through a recipe and then suddenly they found some as yet unmentioned dependency, I mean ingredient, listed that wasn't in the list of ingredients that the recipe gave them. And that brings us back to the explicit dependencies principle. The explicit dependencies principle says that your methods and classes should explicitly require any collaborating objects they need in order to function correctly. Explicitly means that you ask for them. They are passed in as arguments. They should be listed as parameters either on the constructor of the containing class or as actual method parameters on an individual method or function. All right, you can read more about this on DevIQ, but let's go ahead and jump back into that code I was working on and see how we could make the code follow this principle. All right, so it's the next day. We ended up having pasta without any meat last night because of that whole fiasco. But let's see if we can get the problem here with the explicit dependencies principle violation on order processor working now that it's a fresh new day and I've got some time to focus. So first, let's take a look at this thing and see what's going on. All right, so straight away, it needs some settings from some file and then it wants to uh, call some static method on this payment gateway to make a charge for the order. And then it's just going to new up the inventory system right here in the middle of this order processor. Come on, remember, new is glue, people. 
So do not just new things up in the middle here if they're actually introducing a dependency. And then when it's all done, it's going to deduct the stock from that. All right, so all we really need to do to make this thing work is start passing in the dependencies that it needs. So this file here is just reading in basically a string. So we could just pass in the settings as a string to the processor. That's probably not ideal. Really, this is all about configuration. So if we had some interface like public interface, uh, let's say order processor config, and it had some stuff on it, we don't really care what for the, for the moment, but we could take that interface and we could pass it in here. And we'll just say, I need a, we're gonna name this the way we do in C-sharp. I we'll say, I need an I order processor config. And notice if you just type in the capital letters, it fills in the thing for you, which is kind of nice. And we'll just call that config and we'll assign it to a local variable. And then here where we're gonna do something with settings, we'll just comment this out and say, do something with settings using config. All right, and that's gonna be basically the same thing. Now, I'm not gonna implement the config that's just left as an exercise for you, but let's look at the payment gateway that charge and, and see what we would do with that. Uh, so we, we wanna make minimal changes to our order processor. So let's make another interface and we'll call it an iPayment gateway. And this time we'll call it an adapter because we're gonna adapt the existing one. And when you're making an adapter, it's easiest if you just use the existing interface of what you have. So we're gonna make a charge interface there. And then in here, we wanna call the payment gateway.charge thing there. So we're gonna create our, an instance of our adapter. We'll call this the default payment gateway adapter, which implements IPGA, iPayment gateway adapter. And we're gonna implement that interface. And now all we have to do to make this work is get rid of that. Uh, and up here, we're gonna take this line and drop it in there so it does the exact same thing. Okay, so then here, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna do some dependency injection, control dot, assign that to a local, and in this line, we can get rid of, and instead we're gonna await the payment gateway adapter dot charge order. And it's going to actually still call that same static line there, but now we've tucked it away inside this little implementation class, which means that it's easier for us to mock it or, or modify it if we want. Uh, and more importantly, we've told the calling code that it needs one of these things. All right, and so that takes care of that. Now we have an inventory system that we're just newing up here. Uh, we can do the same thing with that. Maybe, maybe we already have an interface, but if we don't, we'll create one and we'll just have it look like what we need. So again, we're gonna say I have an I inventory service, let's say, and this thing just needs a deduct stock method, which is uh, async again. And look at that, I even guessed what I was gonna need. And now we probably want an adapter for that as well. So we'll just make a public class. We'll call it the default inventory service. Oh wait, no, we don't even need to do that. You know why? Because we already have this inventory system. So if we own this code, we can just go to definition on it and have it implement the interface of I inventory service and nothing has to change. Yeah, so now we're back to this needs to be updated. But before we do that, let's review here we got to inject our inventory system. So let's do that. We'll come up here. This one is all that changes to say we're going to use the injected one right there. And then we don't need to new it up. So we're not gluing the order processor to that particular implementation. Now we did break the constructor because we added three new things that it needs. We probably also, while we're here, add a logger as well if we wanted. Um, but now we can jump back into our calling code and instead of it lying and saying, I don't have any ingredients, I don't have any dependencies, we know what it needs, right? So when I go and I try and create this or someone next week tries to use this for what they need, they're gonna see exactly what it needs. And so I can now pass in, you know, whatever the config is, whatever the adapter is, at least I know what those things are up front. And if I know where to find them, know how to get them, I can easily complete my work here and not get surprised at runtime that it has a bunch of things that are gonna break. So as far as actually making this work and getting instances of those things, I'll leave that as an exercise for y'all. But this is it for this video. Hopefully you found the uh, explicit dependencies principle to be something valuable. Maybe it's something you didn't know about. Maybe you can see how it's very similar to the ingredient list on an actual cooking recipe and share this with some friends if you think they'd benefit from it as well. Until next time, 
Enjoy these wonderful pictures of spaghetti bolognese and keep improving. Bye.